Okay, guys, so for those who I who I'm seeing for the first time. Uh, my name is Dennis. Uh, formerly, I work uh, as a software developer, but last 10 years I've been uh, doing a soft skill trainings. And uh, one of those trainings, actually one small part of those, uh, of those trainings, we are going to uh, rush a little bit to, of, the, of that today because we have like 45 minutes. And 45 minutes is for sure not enough to uh, say everything about the feedback. But what we are going to talk about today is uh, several types, several uh, ways how to give feedback. And most of all, we are going to discuss uh, in which situation we are going to apply which approach uh, in giving feedback. So if you rush now into the literature or, I don't know, you go to an internet and try to uh, make a research about what you should do, what you should avoid uh, when giving or receiving feedback, you will find millions of rules. And basically, m most of them, even all of them, are kind of true. But uh, today we are not going to talk about what you should do, what you should not do, do's and don'ts. Let's go right away on the forms and see which type, which approach we can use in, in different kinds of situations. Uh, before we actually start, we mentioned, we, mentioned, uh, we saw this slide uh, several times today. You know, the human motivation and, and you know, energy for, uh, for uh, giving and sharing to other people can go very, very far, but usually re at some point reaches um, a point where you should do something, where you cannot do something without the money. And this is where these companies uh, jump in and uh, help us to be here today. So uh, this is our way to say them thank you. Uh, the first type uh, of the feedback that we are going to talk about today is constructive feedback. What is feedback? What is feedback for you? How do you see feedback? Hmm? Opinion. Opinion about what? Okay, yeah? Possibility to react. Possibility to react. Uh, opinion to, uh, on some actions. Uh, of course, this is all true. But uh, let's just summarize this. It's a kind of return information for something, for some action. But what's the key point here? It's the return information for the action that happened when? In the past. In past. Can you change something in the past? No. So, uh, say, call, oh, thanks. Uh, the psychologist usually you know, argued whether feedback is a good way to you know, approach to people to kind of improve their per performance because you l let them make a mistake and then said to them, hey guys, you made a mistake. So instead of giving a feedback, they said, okay, let's give something, something different. Let's give something we call feed forward. What is feed forward? It's the input for some action before you actually do some kind of the action. But Let's look like this. If you say to someone, hey, um, I don't know, take uh, this chair and sit like this and, you know, sing like this and jump like this, will that person do exactly the things that you said to, the, uh, to him or to her to do that? Probably not, especially if that person is doing that action for the first time. So now we come to the conclusion that even if we give some input to some person before the action happens, it's still not, it's not guaranteed that that person will actually do what we expect from, from that person. So what might be a good solution? What do you think? Hmm? Any idea? Okay, but... Uh, <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny, but the psychologist said, okay, so both of the, of the, of the, of the, of the approaches has some... Um, advantages and disadvantages. Combining them into one form, might, we might come up with an approach that can give possible good uh, 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 effect, can leave possible good effect on the person that we want, which skills we want to improve. So, in other words, combining, uh, combining feed forward and feedback is actually how we build uh, constructive feedback. In other words, we have some actions. Let's uh, make this chair, let's color it uh, with red color, okay? Now, the positive feed forward would be the actions, what you need to do, what was good for, for our team in the past, and what you should apply while you are coloring this chair into the red. The negative feed forward 
would be the actions that the team consider uh, found bad or not so good and that you should avoid uh, while you are uh, coloring this chair into the red color. So before you actually start coloring, we are telling you what you should do and what you should avoid. Then you take the, the color and you, you, know, you start to color this chair. You do the best you can, the best you know. There are some good things that you did and there are some things that you could done better. And after we gave you the feed forward, after you've done the action, then we are approaching to you and then we are telling you the positive feedback, what was good, what you actually did as we expected, and what are the, the, the things that you should improve next time when you take the color and you approach to the chair to color it. So if we want to invest in people, we should not destroy their feelings because our goal is to improve people not to destroy their feelings. This is funny, okay. Uh, the thing is, if we are only telling to, to the guys, you know, you did this bad, you did this bad, uh, you could do this better, we are not actually investing in their improvement. We are not investing in the way how they can uh, change the things in the way where we want them to go. But if we invest our time, our energy, and uh, our experience before they do the actions, and especially if we invest our time, energy, and experience after they, de the, they do some actions, then they can have the whole picture. What they should do bef before they start the actions and what they could improve next time when they uh, do some kind of the actions. Now, uh, the constructive feedback is something that we need to apply every day when we are working with the people, especially when some new guy comes to our team. Because it is totally normal that each one of us is good in several things. Someone is good in 10 things, someone is good in 100 things. At the same time, it is completely normal that we are not good in some other things. Some of us is not good in 20 things, some of us is not good in 1 million things. It doesn't matter. But what's the point? There are no people in this world that knows everything. And the key point is that we need to share in uh, our uh, knowledge and our experience with the, uh, in, we need to imp uh, invest in other people in order to see and to, you know, to, to feel that other people are starting to invest and to share their knowledge and their experience uh, in the areas where we are not you know, feeling comfortable and so on. Okay, the next, we go with the next form of the feedback and it's called sandwich feedback. Has anyone of you heard for a sandwich feedback? Cool, others at least for a sandwich? Yeah, okay, cool. Now, what's the point with the sandwich feedback? Uh, sandwich, if sandwich feedback is a kind of a feedback that the, it's the first and most used feedback all over the world. I think, I think almost everyone knows about it. But let's see what is it so good in this uh, uh, approach and what are the disadvantages of using the sandwich feedback. Now, you see this, this meat here. If you just take a meat and someone approaches to you and say, here you go, take a meat, and you take that meat, you know, is it nice to eat just the meat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some of you might, you know, take it and eat it, but it's not tasty as it is when you put the, meat, uh, when you put the bread around the meat. Uh, it, it's more tasty with the bread, definitely. Do we agree with that? Okay. It's the same thing with, with giving the, the, the feedback. If you approach the person and you say just a negative thing to that person, that person will hear you, okay? But is he or she going to feel nice about it? Probably not. But if you pack that negative thing with two positive, then it might, um, it might, it might find that information a little bit easier. Okay, so let's see how it, how it goes. If we have some negative information that we want to share with some other person, it will be easy for us to, you know, to define it. So we have what we say here, a meat. But we don't want to give just a meat. We want to give something that is more tasty, something that the person will you know, take it from us. So in order to, for this person to accept this negative thing, we will pack this negative thing with too positive. 
how we go with this type of the feedback? First, we approach the person and we start with some positive thing. Look like this. When you, see some, when you see some nice girl on the street or some nice guy, when you approach that person, will you say to that person, oh my God, you can, you can talk so loud. Or you will say, oh my God, look how did you dress up. If you do like that, you will probably lose all your chances. Instead of that, you approach the person and you give some kind of a compliment. You're so beautiful, you, I don't know, your eyes are amazing, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing with giving the, the negative information. You approach the person, you start first with a positive thing, some kind of the, the, the compliment. Why? We want to open that person. We want to make that person open to information that we are going to deliver to, that, to him or to her. Okay, after we open that person, okay, after we open the, uh, the way uh, for our information to, to go to that person, then we uh, move to negative information. The moment when, uh, in the, the first we open that person, the moment we st uh, start to, uh, to tell negative things, okay, that person is easily closing to, uh, towards us. And what do we said on the, in the beginning? We don't want to break people's feeling. We want to improve them. We want them to be aware of their, uh, of not mistakes, but the things that they need to improve. And in the same time, we want that person to leave this room without uh, uh, break feelings, but at the same point, at the same time, with the information what he needs to improve with himself. For that, in order to leave this room in a positive spirit, we are uh, closing this form of feedback with some positive thing. So if we are talking about, I don't know, uh, his outfit, we might say, uh, we might give him a, a sandwich feedback in a way. Can I use it as an example? Yeah, sure. Cool. It can be like, I really like the style how you dress up today. Uh, although you might, you know, wear some t-shirt, might, you might look uh, more fa uh, fancy in, in the t-shirt, but I don't, I don't have any doubts that you are going to surprise us tomorrow with some uh, new clothes. Okay, so first we open him because he likes to hear some positive things about him. Then we said what he needs to improve. And in order to leave this room in a positive spirit, we said some, uh, again some positive thing. Now, we said this sandwich is good, it's tasty, when this meat is surrounded with the bread. But it's even more tasty when we put some ketchup or some sauce between the meat and the bread. It's the same with, the, with, the, with that feedback. It's okay to go positive, negative, positive. But if you include the things that goes between uh, positive and negative, then this feedback might look like even more natural. To be more precise, if we use the words like but, uh, or uh, although, and so on and so on. If we use the words that are kind of showing us some kind of the contrast, then everything positive that we said here will be kind of deleted. If you say to someone, I really like the way how you dress up today, but I don't like your, I don't know, t-shirt, everything positive that you said in the beginning that person will just stop, uh, he or she will not believe you, okay? So in order to still keep kind of natural approach, we try to avoid the words that are describing some kind of the contrast. The words like but, or uh, although, and, and so on and so on. To be more precise, uh, if, we are, if we want to give him a sandwich feedback with this sauce, it will look, it will look like this. I really like the way of your, your style, of your, uh, the way how you dress up today. Uh, I expect from you to surprise me tomorrow, even with some yellow colors, but I don't, but you see how it sounds? Uh, I don't have any doubts that you're going to uh, surprise us uh, tomorrow with some fresh colors. So instead of saying someone, but you have some mistake, you are putting your expectation in front of him so that he knows that he was okay today, but he has something in front of him that 
he can do in order to satisfy you even more. In, in this concrete example, to take some yellow uh, t-shirt or, or something like that. Okay, so what do you see as a good thing and as a bad thing with the sandwich feedback? Hmm? Okay, what is good thing? Sugar-coated. Yeah? It's sugar-coated. Yes, exactly. What else? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and one more, I mean, these, these two points are really true, and there is one more. When we have a new guy in the team, that new guy, he, he knows that he, is, he doesn't know the information like the other guys in the team who are for several months or several years in the team, right? He knows that he has a lot of things to learn and, and to adapt for, for some period. But what he expects is that he expects that as soon as possible, he gets some kind of input from his team that he is giving some contribution to that team. In other words, he is expecting to get as soon as possible these kind of positive things, right? He knows that he has a lot of things to learn or to improve or, or, or some things that he doesn't doing very well. But, you know, every one of us kind of expects to get this positive uh, 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 feedback from, from the guys that we are working with. Sandwich feedback fits great with the new guys in the team because you're, with this negative thing, you're telling him in which direction you expect him to be improved, you know, in, in some short period. But at the same time, you're satisfying his need for these positive things that he's, you know, contributing to the team. What might be the negative things of the sandwich feedback? What do you think? Well, maybe the negative, was, the negative will not be received as it should. Bravo, bravo. So the thing is, you know, we are packing here a negative thing, OK? We are packing with the positive, two positive things. But what might go wrong is that in some cases, we make this positive thing so big, and this one so big, that this negative thing, in the eyes of the receiver of the information, doesn't look, you know, important. It, it looks like, it looks like a, just a small thing. In other words, if we are going to tell you, you know, your, your style of clothes is so, so great, you know, the trousers, the, the jacket, everything, you are so, so great. A little bit of t-shirt, but you know, you are, we, are, we, we believe in you, you are so good with, you know, styles and, and stuff and the fashion. The person who is receiving feedback might not notice this negative information if these positive things are so, so, so big. That's the negative thing of, of, uh, of the sandwich feedback from the point of the person who is receiving the feedback. But what about the good and the bad things uh, from the point of view of the person who is giving the sandwich feedback? What might be the good thing? He doesn't seem as an what? What? Sorry? He doesn't seem like an idiot. Who? The guy who's giving the feedback because he can seem as a jerk uh, when he's pointing out the negative. Exactly, that's one thing. And one more, if you hate me, will you, be, will you find easy to find a negative thing that, to say to me? Exactly. So if you hate me, for you it will be a piece of cake to find me not one, but millions of the negative things. But you know, in order to give me a sandwich feedback, you need to sit and to find at least two positive things. So the sandwich feedback from the, term, from the point of who is giving the feedback helps you you know, to break some kind of the prejudge this, to say, you know, this guy has a lot of things in which he, he uh, needs to improve, but he's not so bad, bad as I thought on the, you know, on, the first, on, the first, on the first look. What is the bad thing from the point of a uh, person who is giving the feedback? He needs to find those two positive Exactly, it's not an easy job especially if you need to give sandwich feedback several times a day, a week, a month. You know, it's spending uh, your energy, your time, your concentration. It's really hard work. It's not an easy job. So as a conclusion, when do we use a sandwich feedback? Only when we have new guys in the team. It can be guys 
just ca came from the faculty. It can be guys with 20 years of the experience, but they are new in the team. Why? They have a need to get some kind of positive vibration from the team, that they are, giving, that they are contributing to the team. And with the sandwich feedback, we are kind of satisfying their needs for, for, for this uh, uh, positive contribution. Okay? But in true team, in, where we have a true team spirit, people, can, people are, are you know, expected to talk openly, to speak directly, and this is something where we want to come in, I don't know, several months, several years, hopefully months, then years, but in, at some point we want to have a team where people can talk openly about different things without having to pack those informations uh, between each other. But until we come to that point, we need to pack them. And we, need, we are packing the uh, only, we are using only sandwich feedback when we have a new guys in team. If we uh, have guys who spend several months working together, then we do not use sandwich feedback because it can frustrate people, you know, every time you're packing them, packing them, packing them, and they just, you know, they get frustrated. Why don't you just tell me directly what's wrong, what's, uh, what's good, and, and so on, and so on. Okay, the next form of the feedback is, are everyone clear with the sandwich feedback? <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go further on. The next form of the feedback is uh, so-called uh, RSVP feedback. You know, I'm not kind of a French guy. I, actually, I don't speak French at all, but this uh, RSVP is a short of response vous play. I hope I said this well. Uh, it means please respond. Now, what? What do you think, where do we use this uh, RSVP feedback? Facebook. Where? Facebook. <laughs> 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 okay, but in which kind of situation? Well, you have to know me uh, very short. What do you mean by that? Well, when, when you need to quickly say, do you want something or not, or just gonna maybe do it in some situation. Okay. Uh, Code review, okay. Uh, can you, you well, know, give us some input? Uh, norm, quite often you have some kind of code review in the, in a design project. You ask them to review your code and, or something Great, like that, so great, 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 great example now. Now, why I ask you to explain to us? Because it is very, uh, very, very crucial to whom we are talking to. Why? We have, uh, I don't know, Faris approached to us one day and said, you know, Dennis, you need to make a remote control, okay? So this is your task, make a remote control. You need to program some things, you need to make some hardware. In, in other words, this is your project, you have, I don't know, six months, 10 years, whatever. Now, my goal is to make a remote control that will rock, that will kick everyone from the chair when they see, when I present this con uh, remote control. I guess this is the mutual feeling with all of us. But, you know, uh, Peter, right? Okay, you know, Peter has been working with uh, buttons, with some kind of hardware uh, in the last two years, but you know, he's working in some other department. He's full of work, it's almost unreachable guy. But you know, in our company, he is the guy who knows the most about the buttons and, and plastics and hardware and so on. How will I make Peter motivated to take some of his time, which is like nothing, to give me a true feedback what could be improved on my remote control? Now, if I just approach to Peter and say, you know, Faris gave me a task to make remote control. I know you have been working last several years on, on similar things. Can you just take a look whether something can be improved or not? If Peter has like a million emails to reply, uh, a lot of clients, you know, uh, calling him, uh, if he has his own, uh, his own tasks to, to finish, he will probably just take that remote control just to be polite. Yeah, okay, I will just take a look. After a day, two week, he will write me an email. Ah, I took a look. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it looks right. Nice. But is that feedback good for me? No. 
Why? Because I want to kick everyone from the chair when I present this remote control. And if I get a feedback, yeah, it's okay, then I didn't get the true feedback what might be improved on this remote control. Now, in order to make Peter motivated to give me a true feedback, I will approach to him and I will give him, I will ask for RSVP feedback. Now, the key with RSVP feedback is, is that it gives exclusive role to the person from who you expect some kind of the input. In other words, I will approach to Peter and I will give him some exclusive role. I will talk with him in a form that he understands that his opinion is truly important for me. In other words, uh, Peter, uh, you know, Faris gave me a task to make a remote control. Uh, from the moment I came to this company, you were the guy who helped me a lot, the guy from who I learned almost everything that I'm applying today and whose opinion I really, really, really appreciate. It would be an honor for me if exactly you will be the one who will just take a look at this remote control and truly give me some input, what can be improved and what can you know, be, be removed from the remote control. Now, Peter, you know, he understands that he has some kind of reputation in my eyes. And he will not just say, you know, yeah, it's okay. Now he feels obligation to take some time to take a look at my remote control and to provide me some feedback in order to keep his reputation in my eyes. Now, this is how we use and when we use RSVP feedback. Not all the time and not to everyone. Only to some, let's say, special people from, for who we know that might give us a good input for the things that we really, really, really need. So this is kind of when you have some kind of experts in your company and you want to keep their opinion, their input for yourself for some special cases, when those special cases come, this is, how, this is the approach that will work better than just approaching to them and say, can you give me the feedback? Usually if people have time, they will give you appropriate feedback. But to be realistic, can you consider your free time? It's really, really small, I guess. So you need to fight, <laughs> fight not like, fight through fight, but you know, you're, you need to uh, find a way how to reach someone's free time or how to grab someone's free time for your own good for the product that you're working on, okay? Uh, any questions about RSVP feedback? No? Okay, good. Let's go on. The next feedback, the next type of the feedback that we are going to talk about is so-called corrective feedback. Now, you can, you probably know all of this. I, I'm sure you all, you all know for all of these, but let's see in which situation we are going to use which kind of uh, approach. Now, corrective feedback is mostly used in educational purpose. When I say in educational, educational purpose, I don't mean like presentation, you're in front of the people, that as well. But it's also kind of when a new guy comes into the team and, and your, your boss says, hey, you can be his mentor, teach him, uh, make him, you know, understand the, the, the methods, uh, the technology, the, the way how we uh, do things in the company. And, you know, the discussion between just two of you is a kind of educational process where you teach him or you train him how you do and what you do. Now, we have some kind of six approaches and let's see what each of them are used for. The first one is so-called recast. What might be the recast? What do you think? Hmm? Let's say like this, you prepared a great presentation. It has amazing flow. You know what you will say in the beginning. When are you going to make a joke with the audience? When are you going to, you know, create some animation? When you're going to turn off the lights? When you're going to turn on the lights? And so on and so on. In other words, you have some kind of the flow, okay? And at some point, you ask something to your audience or your colleague that you're delivering information to him. And he gives you the wrong input. For example, if I ask you, which color is this chair? And you say to me, it's red and it's gold, I guess. 
What? OK. I will take the other chair. <laughs> OK. So the thing is, I prepared the flow of the presentation where I will ask you which color, this, <laughs> which color is this chair, and you will tell me gold, and I will continue the story based on, on, on the word gold. But someone from the audience or the guy that I'm talking with told me, you know, I think it's kind of yellow or orange or, or red or whatever. It's not what you expected, right? And you cannot continue with your flow because it will be silly. But however, you don't want to say to that person, no, it's not that. It's, go it's not red, it's gold. Why? Because if you break someone's feelings, or if, let's say like this, if you make someone in the audience feel, this is a harsh word, stupid, what will you get? You will get a hater in the audience. It, you will get a guy who will sit during your presentation and say, okay, now I'm going to follow you all your presentation. I'm going to find every single mistake in your presentation so that I show to everyone, it's not me who, uh, who said the wrong answer, it's you also who doesn't know some things. So instead, instead of getting the supporter from the audience, you get the hater. And it's what, not what you want, right? So in order to avoid this situation, we use the recast. We take someone's input and say, yeah, I would say like that. It's kind of the yellow color, but I would say it's, it goes more on the gold. So you take someone's input, you make some kind of preformulation, some recast, and you, you provide the info that you expected to hear from the audience. Once you get the gold words, you go on with your flow. Okay? So what did we get with this? We didn't say, you man, you're stupid, it's not a uh, yellow, it's a gold. We said, okay, I would just say with a, a kind of another words, it's kind of a yellow or a, it's more kind of a gold. When we say gold, we mean and so on and so on. The guy doesn't feel bad about it. He's not a hater, he's actually a supporter for you because you didn't break his feelings, you didn't make him feel bad because of his wrong answer, okay? What's the good thing, what's the bad thing with the request? The good thing we said, we get a supporter instead of a hater. The bad thing is that recast is not an easy thing to make, especially ad hoc while you're on the scene. What if someone said blue? How will you make a recast from a blue to the gold? From yellow to gold, it's kind of easy. But from the blue to the gold, it's really a good job for someone to make that. So the bad thing when we talk about the recast, it really requires a good, I would say, word skill, if this is uh, appropriate uh, to say, because it, it really, it really, it's really hard to, to make a recast in some specific situation. The another approach is so-called as explicit correction. What might be the explicit correction? Hmm? What do you think? It's when you say something and the other person says, no, it's not that, it's this. It's yellow, no, it's gold. Explicit correction, a correction is explicit input what's not and what, what is. Now, when is this good, when is this bad? Let's start from the bad thing. When it's bad, almost always, because it's kind of the breaks feeling, it, it breaks the motivation and the courage for the person to give the answer again. When you make a mistake, mistake for first time, your motivation to give an answer again is 50% lower. If you make a mistake for the second time, you don't have a courage and motivation to provide an answer on the third question, right? But the good thing with the explicit correction is that it's great in the situation when the time is critical factor. In, for example, when something breaks in the production environment, you don't have time to make a pre-formulation, recast, and you know, some nice speeches. You need a, a fast reaction. And you cannot, uh, you know, the, the, the time is very critical in that situation. So you don't, you just use explicit correction so you, you, that, uh, so you can decrease the time span in the communication. 
So, as a conclusion, explicit correction we use only in the situation when we really, really, really don't have a time to talk. Okay? The third approach is elicitation. What might be the elicitation? I bet every one of you had a chance in your life to, to face with this kind of approach. It's kind of, when someone asks you a question, <clears throat> in which city we are today? And no one knows the answer. And then a person approached and said, sa, 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 and someone says, Sarajevo, Sarajevo, bravo. Now, the elicitation is kind of, you know, giving some small inputs, but still not giving you the whole the answer. Now, what's good with the elicitation? The person who gives the answer, even in this form, feels like he gave the, the, the correct answer, he feels happy about it. What's the bad thing with the elicitation? Mostly in our heads, it's kind of connected with the way how our teachers, especially in the primary school, have been dealing with us. And when we have, you know, kind of older people facing with elicitation, it's okay when you have one hour presentation and you use elicitation for one, one time. But if you use it for several times, people will feel, you know, kind of stupid. They will say what this guy thinks, that we are children. Why is he using elicitation and so on and so on. So elicitation is good a method to use once during your presentation, but it should not be used several times because psychologically it puts a person in a period when he or she was a small child. The fourth approach is so-called metalinguistic clues. Now, what might be the metalinguistic clues? For example, when someone, when, when a presenter asks some kind of the question, like, where are we are, in which city we are today? And the audience is, you know, it's quiet. No one knows the answer. And then the presenter says, hmm, in which city are we today? And then no one, again, doesn't give an answer. And then he continues, will someone give me an answer? And then what happens? The audience get pissed on the guy who is presenting. Why? He's making people feeling, you know, bad because not knowing the answer. What do we get? We get haters. Not one person, the whole audience is hating the guy who is presenting. Instead, but do, what do we want? We want supporter, not a hater. Instead of that, we are making a metalinguistic clues in a situation when the audience doesn't know our final answer. So we are asking several small questions. Like, okay, where we are, in which continent? We are in Europe, yes. Okay, in which country are we today? In Bosnia and Herzegovina, yes, great. Okay, in uh, which city are we today? Which city is the, uh, what, which is the capital city of Bosnia and Herzegovina? And someone says Sarajevo. Okay, and in which city are we today then? And uh, the fourth guy says Sarajevo, Sarajevo, great. Now. From the point where no one knew the answer, we came to the point that we got four correct answers. And four people probably uh, you know, felt great for giving the correct answer. Wow, I gave the correct, correct answer. So instead of getting the hater from the audience, you, you asked several questions. You made metalinguistic clues to your final answer. And you made people feel good about it. In other words, you create supporters in your audience. And this is what you wanted in the end. Uh, the fifth approach is so-called clarification request. What might be the clarification request? What do you think? Hmm? Clarification request. What? Uh, uh, something like that. Exactly. Exactly. Something like that. The thing is, especially when you have a situation where you have some experienced guy in the team, and some, let's say, less experienced guy or new guy in the team. And this experienced guy asks this new guy, you know, how do you do this, some kind of a process? And he says to him, we do it like this, 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 this. Now, this experienced guy, he knows that he gave the wrong answer. But if he says to him, you know, it's not like that, you don't know that, and so on and so on, he will break his feeling. And we are talking about the new guy who just came to the team who wants to hear as soon as possible these positive things, right? 
and we are in kind of this situation to tell him these negative things. Now, in order not to give him negative things, what this experienced guy is using, he's using the clarification request, where he will make, even he knows, even if he know, even the fact that he knows the right answer, he will make himself like he doesn't know the answer, and he will ask this new guy, okay, so if I understood you right, with that action that you just explained, you can do this, right? In that moment, this new guy understands, or he is not sure whether this question that he asked can really be done. So he said to him, okay, I will need to check, I'm not sure, probably yes, but I will check. After several minutes, several hours, several days, he comes and says, you know, before we could, but now you know how it's done in our company and so on and so on. So now we can't do it, but before we could. However, the present situation is like, we can't do it, so, so on. Now, the experienced guy finally made him, the new guy, uh, knows the final answer, final, the, 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 the final thing that he wanted him to know about. Instead of breaking his feelings, he kind of forced him in a positive manner to get the correct information, so he kind of brought him from the point A where he was to the point B where this experienced guy wanted him to be after some, some period. So we are using this uh, clarification request in the situation where we don't want to break anyone's feelings, but at the same time we want to make others move from the point where they don't know, where they don't have the right, the correct the information, to the point where they have the correct information. And the last approach for today and for this uh, type of the feedback is so-called re repetition or repetitive uh, 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 approach. What might be the repetition or repetitive? Hmm? Repeating. Something like that, something like that. Uh, you're very close. The thing is, uh, no matter which presentation you have, with five slides or with five thousands of slides, it is absolutely impossible for any human in this world to remember absolutely every single information that you have on these slides and that uh, that person who is presenting is telling to the audience. It is absolutely impossible. So in order to make your audience know what was the most important during your presentation, you need to repeat during your presentation every single, the key points of your presentation so that person, when he or she leaves the room, knows what did we talk about today, what were the, the most important things during your presentation. It cannot be the million things, the less the better, but if you really, really have to go to the maximum point, you need to choose five, six, maximum five to six things that you want your audience to remember. For example, the, uh, I forgot the name, sorry. Peter. Peter, yeah, yeah. Peter had a great presentation where he, before the, on the beginning, he just put the, the main points, what he wants his audience to remember. During his presentation, he was, you know, explaining the, 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 the things that we do this, we do like this, this, this. But every, uh, every time when he was explaining each chapter, he was repeating the main point during his presentation. So the repeating the key points we are doing when we have a big presentation where we want from, you know, a lot of slides, we want audience to remember maximum five topics uh, that are most important from our presentation. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, kind of time is almost over. Uh, this was very, very, very fast, uh, 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 kind of a rush through feedback forms. I hope we, had, we will have a chance to talk more uh, about other forms and about these forms as well. Thank you. Yeah. There will be a chance to talk. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you here and please take Thank you. from Bosnia and Thank you.